Hello folks, things have been pretty depressing as of late, so to cheer myself up, I thought I'd check up on some of the latest research on upcoming hair loss treatments, and the one that seems to be getting the most hype by far is Brizula, which is the trade name for the drug Clascoterone, which is also known as CB0301. Now, we all know that finasteride has been the gold standard for hiding hair loss since 1992 when it was first approved by the FDA. And even today, most doctors will always recommend that people start with finasteride in their fight against hair loss or male pattern baldness. Uh, they recommend it first and foremost because, you know, it works, it has a low risk of side effects, and even people who do get side effects can easily mitigate those side effects simply by reducing their dosage. And, you know, it's been shown that finasteride, even when it's taken in dosage, dosages as small as 0.25 milligrams per day, or even every other day is still effective and is actually the standard dose in nations like Korea. Now, even though it looks like uh, finasteride is the gold standard for treatment, um, it looks like it's about to get some competition with Brizula. So I have decided to look at the available research and see how this upcoming treatment compares to finasteride based on the data that is available so far. Now, Brizula has finished stage 3 clinical trials for acne and it has begun stage 3 clinical trials for androgenic alopecia. Now, this is not the first time there has been a topical anti which has endeavored to achieve FDA approval. RU5841, which I've talked about on my channel many times before, uh, was abandoned while undergoing clinical trials for reasons that aren't fully understood, but it likely has something to do with its molecular instability, meaning that once the drug is compounded, it has a short half-life, and that's why a lot of people who have used RU5841, they notice it doesn't work when they buy like the prepackaged solutions. They usually have to mix it themselves. Now, Brizula, on the other hand, looks like it's well on its way to being the first FDA-approved drug for hair loss, which means for the first time, Finasteride is going to have an anti-androgen which directly competes with it. Now, I am a long-term Finasteride user, uh, over 10 years, and I have had tremendous success with the drug, but I understand that not everybody can use Finasteride. So even though the side effects are dramatically overblown and there is no evidence-based data to support the notion that Finasteride has any prolonged side effects, there is still a small risk of sexual and neurological side effects which affect a small percentage of the population. Now, I believe the majority of people who say they can't use finasteride actually can. Uh, they're just imagining they can't because of the nocebo effect. You know, they've bought into the fear-mongering spread online about this great treatment to the point where they have such a negative perception that they're going to convince themselves the drug is harming them even when it's not. And that's discussed more in depth in the TrueUp study, which you guys can Google online. However, uh, despite that, there are still some people who would like to use finasteride, but they just can't for legitimate re reasons. And even though who do use finasteride successfully, there are still questions as to whether or not Brizula is an even better treatment which can replace finasteride or at least be stacked with it. So what I want to do is observe the research behind both of these drugs and see based on the available data which is the better treatment for hair loss. Now everyone, even finasteride's detractors will admit that finasteride does what it claims to do, which is to help stop or uh, at least slow down hair loss. But the question remains if Brizula is the better overall treatment. And I'm hoping that we can find the answers today. So let's take a look at both of these hair loss treatments and see which one comes out on top, starting with the data on Brizula. So looking at a phase two clinical trial of Clascoterone, which as I said before, is the uh, chemical name of Brizula, uh, there, were a, uh, there was a group of about 404 subjects who were enrolled in a double-blind trial who were administered four different doses of clascoterone compared to placebo over a period of one year. So those are very good parameters that are established. And the reason this is a phase two study, for those who don't know, and not a phase three study, is that the intent of the study is to figure out the optimal dosages of these drugs. So the subjects were all men, and they range in ages from 18 to 55 years old, and the these men had androgenic alopecia levels at various severity, ranging from Norwood 3, which is a receded hairline, to Norwood 5. And they probably didn't choose anyone behind a Norwood 5 because by the time you're a Norwood 6 or 7, it's pretty much game over and nothing but a hair transplant from the best hair tra transplant surgeons on Mars is going to save you. So that's why it's very important to act early and not wait until it's too late. But getting back on subject, the 404 subjects were assigned uh, to one out of five treatment groups, including a 2.5% clascoterone solution twice daily, a 5% clascoterone solution twice daily, a 7.5% clascoterone solution twice daily, and, and also a 7.5% clascoterone solution once 
once daily, and finally there was a placebo that was delivered once daily as well. Now these solutions were applied in target areas based uh, where the subjects were experiencing the greatest degree of hair loss over a period of one year, so that likely include, included people who were suffering from uh, pattern hair loss as well as diffuse thinning, and that's when you're not losing hair in any like pattern, you're losing it just all over generally. So. Results of the study showed that all solutions worked at a statistically significant level compared to placebo with a greater degree of efficacy and subject to use solutions of higher concentrations with the best responding group being the group who used the 7.5% solution twice daily. And what was interesting is it seems higher daily frequency, namely twice per day, seems to offer a significant benefit over just daily usage even when the concentration for once a day usage is higher. So for instance, comparing the total gain in hair density to the once a day 7.5% group, the 2.5% twice daily use saw an increase of 13 hairs per uh, square centimeter compared to about 11.5 hairs in the 7.5% once a day solution group. The strongest responders though by far were from the 7.5% twice daily group which saw a nearly 21 hair increase count which shows that clascoterone doesn't seem to have the same diminishing return effect that we see with finasteride where going above the standard one milligram dose hasn't been shown to suppress significantly more scalp DHD due to diminishing returns. So the study's results were compared to the results of the phase three clinical trials for finasteride, which were done for the same duration of time, one year at one milligram of dose, and they compared it to the group that got the best response from clascoterone, which of course was the 7.5% twice daily group. And what they found was that finasteride had an overall hair count increase of 20.1, and clascoterone 7.5% twice daily had a hair count increase per square centimeter of 20.8, which is statistically identical give or take. Furthermore, there were no adverse side effects found with Brizula in any of the subjects suggesting that clascoterone has a superior side effect profile compared to finasteride which does have side effects in a small percentage of people who use them. So at this point, even though Brizula is available through chemical research websites, it is not yet commercially available. It's hard to say when it will be commercially available due to a certain pandemic slowing down research, but it is likely the drug will first be commercially available as an acne treatment called Winlevy by the end of the year, and doctors will prescribe it off-label for hair loss, much like they already do with Dutasteride, which is only FDA approved for benign prosthetic hyperplasia, yet it is still commonly prescribed off-label for hair loss. So whether or not the dosage amount for Winlevy will be the same as the upcoming Brizula remains to be seen. But the study I'm referencing shows that even though a greater dosages work better, even small dosages, dosages are still pretty effective. So it may seem like we, not, we may not have very much to talk about. Brizula at high doses with twice a day frequency works at least as well as finasteride, at least according to the phase two clinical trials that I cited, and it doesn't have any adverse side effects that we know of. So why wouldn't anyone prefer Brizula over over finasteride. Well, let me tell you. As a long-term hair loss sufferer, there are a few things that I think are worth noting that can't really be put into perspective in a study. Finasteride works. We know it works extremely well, and even though there are some people who do get sides from it, the sides are extremely rare and they do go away with discontinuation. There is, as of today, no cure for male pattern baldness, unfortunately, and the closest thing we have to an actual cure is starting treatment before you lose your hair to begin with. But if you want to maintain your benefits with any treatment, then you're going to have to stay on treatment for life. So when looking at treatments long term, you can't just look at the results of the treatment. You also have to consider the likelihood of adherence. And in that regard, I think finasteride absolutely trounces Brizula since finasteride is just a pill you have to take every day or every other day, as opposed to a topical which you'll need to apply at least twice daily if you want to get similar results to finasteride. Plus, a lot of hair loss sufferers don't just use finasteride, but they also use topicals like minoxidil as adjunct treatments. And to those individuals, the idea of throwing in yet another topical to their daily routine just sounds tedious and burdensome because, you know, it is. And I think one of the reasons why finasteride works so well is not just because it suppresses DHT on the scalp, but because it's convenient. 
applying a topical twice daily is not very convenient. Looking at the means of application with hair loss treatments, I'm kind of reminded of my own fitness journey, in fact. When I work out more than five days per week, I do get slightly better results in the short term compared to training just four or five times per week. However, I feel that when I train six or seven days per week, it becomes such a hellish endeavor that it makes training more frustrating than fun, and it puts me at a greater risk of just feeling burnt out and wanting to quit. I don't make gains quite as quickly doing four or five days per week, but I find it is frequent enough to give me decent results in the gym, but not so frequent that I feel I have trouble balancing out other aspects of my life I enjoy. So even though Brizula clearly has been shown to work, I will still be sticking with finasteride simply due to the fact that it is as convenient as just popping a pill and forgetting it. With Brizula, I would have to apply it twice daily and it will likely leave an unpleasant greasy residue on my scalp and hair and there's no telling how long it would take to dry or if it would cause dandruff, dry out my hair, or just make it look cosmetically unpresentable. And it's kind of like, you know, what I tell people about ketoconazole shampoos like Nizoral is that even if it does work, which I have questions about, what good is a treatment that saves your hair if it just makes your hair look like crap. You know, you know, some people may not mind that level of commitment, but I find that after over 10 years of fighting hair loss, I value the convenience of finasteride way too much to replace it with a topical anti-androgen anti entirely, at least at this point. I mean, maybe if they make a topical anti-androgen that can make my hair look as a good, good as it did when I was a teenager, maybe then I'd consider it, but until then, I, I, I will just stick with finasteride. So another thing I think that's worth bringing up is the price issue. You know, finasteride has been off patent for a while, so you can get finasteride very, very cheaply. I have a prescription for generic Proscar, which for those who don't know, that's the five milligram uh, tablet of finasteride compared to Propecia, which is the one milligram tablet. And what I do with Proscar is that I quarter it into 1.25 milligrams uh, like uh, tablets, which I use for a daily dose, which is close to the one milligram standard dose. And it lasts four months with 30 pills and it only costs nine US dollars. Uh, Brizula is not going to be off patent for a long time. And since hair loss is considered a cosmetic issue and not a health issue, it's very probable that insurance will not even cover it. So expect the prices to be substantially uh, substantially higher than finasteride. So nevertheless, uh, despite my own personal preferences for finasteride, I do think it's very exciting that our arsenal in the battle against hair loss is about to expand. And as much as I think finasteride side effects are dramatically overblown, I do acknowledge that some people cannot use it. And I am really happy for the people who uh, will finally have an actual FDA approved alternative that they can use. You know, nobody wants to become a slaphead. So the more options we have to fight this curse, the better. So with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And yeah, my hair is absolutely terrible right now. It's pretty terrible that I'm uh, talking about hair loss when my hair looks as bad as it does. It's very long. It's very disheveled and I need to get a haircut. It's just that, you know, because of certain circumstances, it's become pretty difficult, but hopefully uh, next video, my hair will look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than it does now. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.